Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today I would like to share with you how I organize my packing table as well as some tips and tricks around the subject of packing or packaging that have helped me make my workflow easier and save me a lot of time and a lot of stress as well. So this table is a very simple work table that I got from Amazon. Here you can see some pictures and I will leave a link down in the description box below. So as you can see, it has a shelf on top where you can store some things. Then it has a board on the back with some holes in it. They are pre-made and I added an additional peg board that I will show you in just a minute where you can find it and how it is. And then it has a drawer, which is very handy. And underneath it has some storage where you can store some additional things. So that's really practical. Starting from the bottom, I have this see-through container that is holding gift boxes, different types and sizes. And I always like to keep these available because people like to order gift boxes and like to make gifts. So they always know that um, they can just order something and that will get something nice. So I have these sturdy ones. Then I also have these foldable ones. I got these from Amazon and they are really cute. They come in a packet of 20 with uh, different colors and different patterns and you can just assemble them easily and, uh, and then you have a nice gift box uh, always available. I also do have other type of gift boxes like this bakery kind of boxes you can see here with a see-through window, very cute. Or, you know, there are other type of bakery boxes that you could use and, um, you know, add some cupcakes and you would have a nice gift box as well. Okay, so moving on, there is my packing material. So I have packing peanuts and bubble wrap. And this is something that is always nice to have because when you ship an order, you want to put it like first, for example, in bubble wrap. That's how I do it. And then I keep a little ball in my peanut bucket underneath my table where I can just grab the packing peanuts and add them to the box like so and then I'm sure that the products will arrive safely being packaged that way. Here I have some other packing material that I keep whenever I get my own ingredients shipped. I just reuse it, I put it in the box and then that's also a nice recycling method. You can save money and it's eco-friendly. Moving on to the next feature here, I have a drawer. And in my drawer, I keep the tissue paper always ready. And it's nice because it's large enough so it can be in flat and nicely stored. And the tissue paper is really a thing I absolutely love. And I'm using it for different um, kind of purposes. One is whenever I ship an order that comes in from the website, I just add the tissue paper in the box and this makes the order or the packaging so much more elevated or it gives really this touch of a handmade kind of artisan, you know, high quality product. And it's just an additional attention that the person receives once she opens the package and then she sees there is this nice tissue paper in it. Here you can see a large order also with the tissue paper. It doesn't matter if it's large or small. I also pop it in my gift boxes. It just makes the gift box also much nicer. Here's another type of paper that I'm using for a large gift box, like a blue style. And then here another large gift box and it makes the product so much nicer with it. So that's the tissue paper. Moving on to the actual work surface, the first item here is my heat gun that I am using for shrink wrapping my soaps and other products and I like to keep it in a container 
so it's once I don't need it I can just pop it in and it's out of the way and I'm sure that I'm not hurting myself or you know burning something accidentally so that's something I would really recommend and I have my impulse sealer here that's a very nice thing to have also I'm using it for packaging soap or melt and pour and also cold process and here I have next to it the shrink wrap bags that I like to keep in glasses like this so it's easier for me to just pop them out when I need them and the same for these little bags here these are bags with a sealable bags that I'm using whenever I have some leftover batter or product and I just make some samples and then I have these ready here so I can just add the samples in here and then ship them to people I have a couple of uh, different sizes and colors and so forth I got them from Amazon I can also put a link down in the description box if you're interested but these are always nice to have whenever you have something small going on you can just have these bags ready add a little label to it if you have some labels available or just write it on a little label by hand and then you have a sample ready and that's always good because people love to try things out and usually it always gives another sale so that's a nice thing to have as well I also have some other cellophane bags just handy whenever I need it and I need it for different type of things if you want to make gifts or gift boxes I think if you add a sugar scrub to a bag and add a ribbon to it it can look completely different and really elevate the look or you have some melt and pour products and you add them in a bag you also prevent it from sweating so that's nice as well then I also have some other pens and scissors and exactos and little glue mouses and I always keep my rubbing alcohol ready some cello tape and also this very handy small waste basket that is always good to have on your table so you can just add your waste in it when you need it and in the background you can see this pegboard this is the pegboard from IKEA if you're interested I have another video where I go through some IKEA products that you can use for soap making and there are different kind of features that you can add to this pegboard according to the things that you need you have some little containers some clips some bags or even some hooks where you can add some paper roll to it and that's really very practical because you can assemble it according to your needs and this type of pegboard you can use in different kinds of situations you know like um, whether you use it in your bathroom or let's say you have an office space where you can put your pens or you, are, you have a crafting room, even a sewing room. So I attached one of these pegboards at the back of my table. It's very simple and it has different kind of features like little hooks as you can see here where you can add your scissors and then these containers here you can just also add them to the holes and then you can put in some pens and you have little trays and one very nice thing that I absolutely love are these hooks here that you can use to add your gift ribbon rolls because I found it always very difficult to deal with gift ribbon uh, rolls and then you have them in a box and then you know they they get confused so like this it's very easy I just grab the ribbon that I want and then I can just cut it easily This is a very interesting tool that I don't know if you can really buy it in a store. I got it from the post office and it's actually what they use to determine if your package is within um, a certain width where you can like two centimeters or five centimeters, there are special prices. And if you can manage to package something under that, then you pay less. So that's something that really helps whenever you have to send small packages. I like to use that. And then, of course, I do also have the scotch tape dispenser or 
I don't know exactly how you call it, but this is a tool that really helps me when I have to do packages because I think it's um, otherwise very difficult to control the scotch tape. So with this um, tool here, I'm totally good. It's not really expensive. You can get it in any craft store for a couple of dollars. Moving on to the top of my table, I keep some small tissue papers whenever I need to do some small gift boxes. It's nice to have them always handy. I keep some transparent cellophane rolls here if I want to make some different kind of gift boxes. That's just another type of gift paper that I keep in case I need it. I have some other cellophane bags, some small bags whenever I need to do a delivery to someone, just with one product or something, it's always good to have. Other type of bags here, other type of shrink wrap bags, shrink bands as well, as you can see here, they don't need the, the sealer. It's also a possibility how you can wrap your soap. And then next to it, I keep my business cards that I pop in every order. It's also very important. Here I have some bigger bags that I'm using as well. And moving on to something I always keep uh, in my packing table or near my packing table are these very fantastic, I have to say, tools from We Are Memory Keepers that you can use to make your own gift boxes. So that's a tool here that you can use to cut your paper to size. You have a ruler, so you can exactly measure how much you need in inches and in centimeters. And here you can see an example how you can cut the paper. It has a knife, very sharp knife, so it works really nicely. And then you have these punch boards. One is a gift punch board and the other one is an envelope punch board and it has a, a chart in centimeters and inches where you can exactly figure out what you need to do according to the size of the box that you want. So you just make sure that you have some cardboard paper around and then you can make gift boxes yourself for any type of occasion or any type of person. Here you can see an example, it's very fast, it's very economical and it's very personalized because you get a handmade product in a handmade box and I think that's a very fun combination. So that's something that you can always have around. You invest in the gift box, it's not a lot, it's about $20, maybe $25 and then you can make as many gift boxes as you want. Here you can see another example, very easy very pretty. I also like to keep my labels organized in a in a drawer system, you could say, next to my packing table because this makes it so much easier for me to, you know, minimize the confusion whenever you're looking for a label, you have it there, you have it ready, and that's saving you a lot of time. And then I have some little clips where I can keep recipes or ideas. I always keep some little papers around so whenever I have something I just add it to the board and then I'm sure that I can keep it safely there. The last item that I would absolutely recommend is this self-healing mat. That's a fantastic surface to work on because it has a scale so you can measure. You can, whenever you're doing making some crafty stuff or gift boxes or you need to cut with an exacto once you cut on the mat this cut will heal again so that's something that is totally worth to invest in i got mine from amazon but you can get it in any type of craft or um how you can say store where you can buy utensils and so forth so that's really something i would recommend So that's it, that's all the tips I have for you. I really hope you enjoyed this video, maybe found it even helpful for you. 
I certainly hope so. Hope to see you around for another video very soon and I wish you a wonderful day. Bye bye!